Hello, my name is Stephen. Welcome to HiFinder Tech Talks, where we understand the technology that makes the hydrogen economy work. Today, we are going to be talking about backup power systems. And for this, I will be joined by Manfred Limbrunner from Proton Motors. Manfred actually started at Proton Motors a long time ago as an engineer, worked his way all the way, and now he's at the very top uh, in the management board. So he's basically seen it all and knows all about power systems. So Manfred, welcome to the HiFinder Tech Talks. Yeah, hi, Stephen. Thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, invitation. Thank you, Manfred. It's great to have you here. And um, I see you also brought something quite big with you. What is this, Manfred? Well, it's not quite big. It is actually the smallest fuel cell system that we have um, and that we sell. This is our top seller. It's the high module S8. Uh, uh -huh. This will be also available in a short time uh, with four kilowatts. With four kilowatts. So this, 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 this has eight kilowatts as is or is four kilowatts? No, currently, as you see it here, it is a plug and play eight kilowatt fuel cell system. Okay. So this is a fuel cell system right here in, in, in the studio. Okay. And this, this obviously is in backup power systems as well. This is uh, the heart of the fuel cell backup power system. All right. right. Okay, perfect. Then let's go right to it. Let's talk about fuel cell backup power systems. What is a backup power system? Well, for, for this, I, I think I have also brought you a couple of pictures where you can see our fuel cell systems, how they are implemented, and then I think we talk also about uh, how uh, from the electrical and media side. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, then maybe we should get this out. Of, maybe I can get Björn, Björn uh, my, my dear co-founder. Can you please help <laughs> to take this aside and then I'll get the pictures in. Perfect. So, right, Manfred, here they are. So backup power, what is it? Well, backup power is, is a quite widespread um, a, a term yeah? because with backup power, you can really um, um, break it down in a couple of different applications. Mm -hmm. So most, mostly known also as uninterruptible power systems, UPS, mm -hmm. or emergency power systems. So this is always when the grid falls off and yes. you have to differentiate if that is without any gap or with a gap, mm -hmm. uh, UPS and EPS, mm -hmm. or if you uh, have any applications where you need power supply and you don't have any grid available. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and the major point behind uh, these backup power systems is always you have to first look on the electric integration because a fuel cell system or a fuel cell for itself is I always say produces unregulated voltage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you so always going up and down. Really. Yes. Mm -hmm. So and, and there you have to see how you couple this with the grid, mm -hmm. and also as a fuel cell system, also always needs um, some power to start up. Okay. You couple it in backup power systems with a battery. Okay. So so what we see here on the diagram is is essentially the consumer, the the load side, and this is the grid, and then the the backup power goes in in here in between all that. Yes. Um, so basically, what you see here, you see. The blue box yeah. that I brought with me. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, okay, that will be that one. Yeah, for example. Yes. And uh, as I said, uh, the fuel cell is producing a DC yes. a voltage output. Direct on it. Yeah. And the DC voltage output of the fuel cell doesn't uh, always match with the with the battery. Mm -hmm. You have to couple this with the DC DC converter. This is an essential uh, part where you where you bring them together. All right. And then so you have one voltage here on this, so this could be whatever, it could be two, 240 volt AC, yeah, okay. And then you have a converter here, and what, what, what this battery could be any size as well. Right? Uh, well, basically it is, when, when you look at how you set up a, fuel, a backup power fuel cell system, you always have to look at the load. Uh, you have to say, okay, what is the load, what, what power level does it need? And if it starts, it always has a peak. Yeah? So, okay. so basically what you try not to do is um, have the fuel cell supply the peak power. Uh -huh. So for this, the battery jumps in, yes. cuts the peak power more yes. or less, yes. and, and also uh, brings the energy for starting up the fuel cell system because we have to consider that the, that the grid is, is gone. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, uh, I, I know several, let me say, kind of power systems and they all need some form of energy. Even, even diesel generators need a battery uh, yes. to start up. So take us uh, a little bit further. How, how is this all made up? So, Basically, now when we have looked at the at the basic sketch yes. of the power electronics of the electronic side, yes. then what is missing actually for a fuel cell system, as you just mentioned, diesel, mm -hmm. um, we have to supply a fuel cell with uh, some media. Yeah? Yeah. A fuel cell, what you bring in is air, surrounding mm -hmm. air, yes. and of course hydrogen. Yes. And hydrogen is 
the energy source. Yeah? So if you talk about what is the backup power, uh, the backup time of the load, mm -hmm. you have to consider how long it runs, and based on the back on the bridging time, what they call it, you um, you bring the, the hydrogen as the energy source. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Both of these medias you bring into the fuel cell. This is basically an energy converter. Yeah? Okay. It produces heat, electricity, and pure water, and has some exhaust. Okay. And we bring out the exhaust, air, water, uh, and maybe some perch, some purchase yeah. uh, uh, through this line. Yeah. Also, as I said, um, a fuel cell is beside um, uh, uh, producing beside electrical power some heat. Yes, uh, 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 the value is basically 50-50, I would say. Mm -hmm. So we need also a cooling unit ah, for that. Okay, okay, understood. So essentially, now we're substituting the grid. Uh, as an energy source with hydrogen as an energy source for this load. Yeah. So yes. w w when you look how, 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 how this normally runs, yeah? so in the beginning, let's say the grid is there. Yeah. The, if the grid falls away, then the, the battery takes over and immediately uh, um, bridges the gap of the grid yes. to supply the load and also supplies the, the, um, the necessary power to the fuel cell to start up. To start up, okay, and then that starts up, yeah. yeah. As soon as the fuel cell is there and can supply the power, the fuel cell completely takes over and, and then the complete energy for the load and the power for the load is supplied through hydrogen and fuel cell. All right, okay. Anything else needed for the setup? Um, yeah, of course. Um, uh, basically, I always say you, you have three different topics. You have mm -hmm. power electronics, you have media, what we just said, yeah. and then what is still missing is how do we control all of this? Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Because when we, when we look on the, on, the, on the next slide, yeah. Yeah, all of these uh, components, what you see, the DC, DC, uh, the DC AC converter, the battery, the DC DC converter, and the fuel cell system, they yeah. have internal control systems. Mm -hmm. And you need a master controller that, I would say, um, summons all up and uh, makes sure that they play together in a, in a good in manner. A, in a good way. So yeah. this is also something that you guys would develop, a master controller to, to basically you know, make all this work in tune and in line with, uh, with the system. Well, with a master controller, I would say it's, it's not such a big um, a development topic. Ah. Yeah, because uh, here, normally what we take, yeah, but it's different on other sites as well, yeah. We take um, a SPS controller. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it is. It is not really software development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is taking, let's say, a, a state of the art components. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. So um, yeah, you, you mentioned there's, there's 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 that was the control side, and here we have uh, a schematic. Yes. Um, uh, that this schematic shows more in detail um, uh, the P and I of a fuel cell system. Yes. Yeah. So when we, when we look on the, on the blue surrounding, this is the complete fuel cell system from media side. For example, the, remember the blue box I brought with me? Yeah, the yeah. box we had on the table. Yeah, so, yeah. so everything I, um, that is inside here is inside the blue box. And what you see here are um, the interfaces, uh, the, the media interfaces. So what you see, it's very limited interfaces. Again, comparable to a diesel transit. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you have some exhaust where you bring it outside. The, the dotted surrounding is if you bring it into a cabinet, into yeah. a housing, into yes. a, containers, a containerized solution, then you also have to make sure that because the, the fuel cell system is drawing the, the air from inside the housing, yeah. you bring air in, and as well you have to, to look at, uh, let's say, how to implement it in a safe manner. Yeah? I just say the word exons, yes, exon yeah. concept. That is and this you have to um, you have to vent. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you said air. So these are so these systems need air obviously to work on the cathode side, but the cooling is not done by air. Is this correct? So these are all all liquid cooled systems. Uh, well, we do liquid cooled systems. Ah. Yeah? Of course, there is also the potential of um, uh, air cooled fuel cell yes, systems. Yes. 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 But the air cooled fuel cell systems they play they play the major role in the low power uh, generation sets. Yeah? For example, for for uh, mobile base stations oh, yeah, up telecom. to two and a half, three kilowatt, mm -hmm. but everything that goes uh, on higher, po higher power levels, um, then you 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 make um, uh, uh, liquid cooled fuel cells. Okay. So how would this look when it's when it's then in a bigger, bigger system? Yeah. Uh, what, you're talking if you need more power. Yes. Uh, if, if you have the eight kilowatt yes. in mind, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, we have uh, fuel cell systems eight kilowatt, but the next step is then 21 to 43 kilowatt and mm -hmm. seven kilowatt steps. Mm -hmm. And then we have fuel cell systems up to 200 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. And then you can multiply them. 
-huh. This is also shown on, on, on this schematic. Yes. Yeah? So if you, if you see here, this is a little bit more in detail. Yes. Yeah, this is actually out of a customer mm -hmm. um, a fuel cell project. Of yours. Mm -hmm. um, a project. And what you see here is these fuel cell systems. Yeah? The fuel cell systems, again, coupled with the DC-DC converter on the uh, uh, DC link on the voltage battery, yeah. um, on, on the volt, uh, voltage level of the battery. And that way, you can multiply these uh, fuel cell systems. And the fuel cell systems can work completely independent from each other. So basically, what I always say, there is no power limit. Yeah? It's, it's just, it basically runs always down to the question, how do you store the, the hydrogen? Okay, all right. So if I, can, if I can sum up what I've heard so far. So, so essentially, the, the fuel cell system is there provided energy, but there's always a battery needed for that intermediate break that, you know, when there's a cut, to not have that cut to take that over, but yeah. I know this from all kinds of uh, other backup power systems as well. And then the fuel cell system jumps in. How long does it take until we get the power uh, that we needed usually? Um, it, it takes less than one minute that the fuel cell system ramps up to full power. And then it, dependent on, on, on what the load needs, yeah? Yeah. it can also be operated dynamically, but in stationary systems, normally it runs then stable mm -hmm. on, a, on, a, on, the, on the load. And so, so it'll, it'll be there in, in a minute. Does it need to? So this is from rest, essentially, from just yes. idling. Yes. Yeah. From oh, not even idling, just not from idling. rest. It's completely it shut completely down. off, not saying a thing. Yeah. Okay. So okay, that, that's one thing. Tell me, and just taking a step back, why would one uh, take a fuel cell system as a backup power? I mean, obviously, we see a lot of diesel generators or other kinds of generators uh, used there. So what, why would one take a fuel cell as a backup? Uh, well, with, with diesel, of course, we all know um, that nobody is too fond anymore of um, exhausts of yes. a CO2 yes. that's going into the air. Yeah. Yes. On the other hand, um, uh, of course, you would like to have the same functionality as a diesel genset. Yes. Uh, um, the only way to do this, if you want to have long bridging times and high power, is with a fuel cell. Uh, um, and of course, um, compared to a diesel genset, a fuel cell is um, very easy to maintain. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So the maintenance cycles are much shorter. So um, they, for remote areas where you don't want to go regularly, I don't know, um, a couple of weeks every time to look how the diesel is doing, to, uh, to, to, shut, uh, to, to start it, yeah. to look after the diesel, a fuel cell can sit there uh, the hydrogen is completely without any, um, that, it, that it will um, evaporate. Yes, uh, it will stay. Mm -hmm. And you can also um, have, let's say, a remote access to do the servicing. So the TCO over the complete time frame compared to diesel is cheaper. Okay, Okay. wow, that's, that's, that's super interesting. So tell me, if you put a system somewhere outside, you yes. know, like in a remote location, how long until you have to come back for servicing? Uh, once a year. Yeah. Once well, a year. Because basically, the, the only thing what you have to service or what you have to look in a fuel cell system yeah. is the hydrogen sensors. You have to go there and look them every year if they are still working properly. Yeah. And, and, and then you go there and, and look after the fuel cell system. Okay. Yeah. So how does such a system look? And I know you brought a photo of that as well. I think it's I bigger than what we can put on the, on yeah, the table it's, here. It's bigger than the one uh, that it, it fits into your studio. So I brought oh. a couple of pictures. Okay. Uh, so Maybe we can have a look. I, I think we had also already a look. So this is basically the fuel cell. It's, it's a complete backup power system. Yes, so yes. Um, uh, a, a containerized solution and everything you saw on the, on the first, on, on the, on the pr previous slide, yes. the battery, the fuel cell system, uh, the DC-AC converters, the DC-DC converters, everything at the cooler, everything is uh, is here placed on, on All one in there. You have three stacks, is this is this correct? Or three fuel cell systems? Systems, yeah. systems. Yeah. Because the stack, the stack is the, is the black box. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And yes. the complete system is the, is the frame. So these are our high frame systems. Yes. And we multiplied them uh, yeah. by three. So we come up to roughly 130 kilowatt of fuel cell power. In total? In total. Okay. Um, and the, uh, the peak power um, is, can be supplied by the, by the battery. Yeah? Oh, okay. Of course, the DC-AC converter also has to uh, scope with, 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 with the power. Yeah? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. 240 kilowatt yeah. of peak power. This can run also for a couple of minutes on, on 240 kilowatt. And then the fuel cell takes over and can run stable at 130 or at a lower mm -hmm. load. And just for a bit of orientation here, so here the fuel cell system, battery probably in here on yeah, this side. Yeah, behind our logo. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then, what is this out here? What, 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 do, what are they? 
Uh, th this is the cooler. Yeah, I, I told uh. you when we talk about 130 kilowatt of power, yeah, yeah. if it runs completely on, on full load, mm -hmm. uh, we have the same power thermally. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you have to, at a backup power, you, you normally don't use the waste heat. Yeah? Yes, uh, yeah, other yeah. Um, so you have to cool it down. Okay, okay, you have to cool it. And what about the hydrogen? Where, where is that? Is it in this picture? Um, well, not, not on this picture. I mean, there, there is, there's the interface. Yeah, where, yeah. Uh, because now we're talking about where's the interface for hydrogen and where is the interface to the, to the customer and to the grid or the, to the load. Yeah. Yeah, so the interfaces are, um, hydrogen is placed here and here is the custom interface. I have to see. Uh, here you see it again. Oh, that, but there we see the tank. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, yes. exactly. So here there is a tank. So essentially, Wherever this is placed, will need some kind of storage. Yeah. And um, okay, and that can keep this yeah. this running. This is basically at our premises. So this mm -hmm. is the, the hydrogen storage tank for for operating our our um, factory as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this, for example, has roughly 50 bar and a, about 100 kilograms of hydrogen inside. Yeah. Should last for about 10 to 12 hours if you run it on full load. Okay. All right. So, but um, so 10 to 12 hours. This big container running on on full load. So that's that's. That's what. What was the full load again? Uh, 130 kilowatts. 130 yeah. kilowatts. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that is something. I mean, uh, to get a battery that size is possible, uh, but also big. Uh, it's also big, but yeah. um, uh, you don't. Let's say if if he if he have here, for example, uh, containerized hydrogen storage with 350 or 500 yeah. bar, or yeah. even a metal hydrogen storage system. Yeah, yeah. This is much smaller. Much ah. smaller. Um, uh, than the fuel cell system. Uh, so it, you have to also look what is the right hydrogen storage solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's true. So because the more hydrogen, yeah. basically, the longer this, this could run. Yeah. And just if I, if I may ask, can this run, you know, four days in a row? Go. Um, it, it can, as long as the hydrogen is there. Yes. Uh, uh, of course, if you, you, you can also uh, do a, a, a swapping of the hydrogen storage system, yes. which is not possible with batteries. Uh, mm -hmm. If battery is empty, you cannot, you cannot swap anything. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, it, it. with a logistic concept, you can extend uh, the runtime. So it's always the question, how much do I store or do I have a logistic con uh, concept behind okay. it? So, okay, now can I just uh, have this one or two technical details I want to ask you. So you said you, said you have three systems here. So just, I mean, you know, since you're here, do they all run kind of like at the same, what should I call it, speed or capacity at the same time? The, the same or, load? Or, or are, you, are you, you know, running one and then you turn on the other one and turn the other one? You know, how does that work? It, um, if all of them run at the same time, yeah. then they run or should run basically at the same load. load okay. This is also where the, the, the master controller takes care of. Yes. But of course, you can have one system running and the other ones shut down. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is also possible. Uh -huh. And, so, and okay. also, it is uh, so. It, this is also some kind of redundancy. Yes. So, if one system falls off, uh, of course you have a little bit less load, but you still have power. Okay. Wow. So yeah, that's I. You, you are building these kind of systems, and they can be deployed anywhere in hot, cold environments. Everything, yes. Yeah? Yes. I, I mean, these are. This container is um, for for out, uh, outdoor use. Yes. Yeah? Of course, we had um, specifications where we said, okay, 50 degrees outside temperature in, in Bavaria, if, if this all, all always ex occurs, it's a different question. Yeah. But it's, it, uh, as it is encapsulated and then housed, we make sure that um, the temperature inside that the container stays where the fuel cell is not damaged or other components okay. are damaged. Wow, that has been so much. Manfred, anything else there is to know? Um, well, anything else? To, <laughs> let, let's say, of course, this. I, I will maybe go quickly through these slides uh, mm -hmm. because this is uh, the P PI scheme with all of the uh, all of the three fuel cell systems. What you see, okay, like but what you saw. see, the mm -hmm. interface, the number of interfaces, stays basically the same. same uh, okay. So it's hydrogen in. Mm -hmm. uh, this is water out, yeah. and this is exhaust out. Okay, uh, and. Um, this is what, what I wanted to show you, where, where the hydrogen interface is. So we, you see this black hose. Yes. Yeah? yes. This is where we connect to the hydrogen storage system. Ah. So we come in with a pressure of roughly six bars, and then we take care of it inside. But the black hose is the hydrogen, and these are this is coolant. This is coolant. Ah. This is coolant. Okay, yeah. right, right, right. And uh, well, if, yeah, if you yeah. use um, a hose or you, you yes. have, it's, it's dependent. Mm -hmm. And this is the interface to the electrical and communication side to the customer. Okay. Okay. And of course, um, and as, as you have seen, it is all built on one rack. Yeah? So this rack has like, I don't know how you call it in English, dampers or whatever, you yes. can put it mm -hmm. down. Yes. And there's the truck coming in, goes underneath, 
and locates it where you need. So for example, if you have like a, like a site uh, where you have a road building or something yes, and you yes. need um, clean power, yes, yeah, yes, yes. you can place it there and place also the hydrogen storage system. Yes. And then you have 240 kilowatts on site. Wow, okay. I must say overall, this is really good news because here you have a backup or just general power uh, solution that can be moved around that is 100% clean, can be operated in, yes. th in that way, if you want to uh, say it that way, and is really an alternative to what we currently have uh, in terms of backup power, which is more, mainly fossil based. Manfred, we have unfortunately come to the end of the time. The time has flown. Yeah. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Uh, and I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed watching this video as well. Um, if you want to get in contact with Manfred or find other great systems and components like this for the hydrogen economy, please go on highfinder.com. You can find them all there. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe or give us a note here. And uh, we'll be happy if you watch other videos or follow us on LinkedIn or get to the community in touch. Anyhow, Manfred, it has been a pleasure. I can say it again. <laughs> pleasure for me as well. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank Anytime. You. Yes. Uh, have a wonderful day and see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.